unmitting any trash from Indigenous consultants. I participated in most of the legislative hearings last year and also with the Civic Club review of this and I'm here to now present my testimony requesting further amendments. I wanted to start out by thanking you for including the language I've recommended in the last hearing because I was worried about how we were going to protect our burials, our hail, our endemic species of plants, our medicinals, and our trails and access ways, and that is why I recommended language. Thank you for including it. I noticed that you also did not include several recommendations I made, but accepting the nature of the public process, I can live with it. Uh, I am here to uh, make additional testimony in three areas relating to the rules. Uh, in the process of looking at the proposals in the Civic Club process, uh, I came across recommendations that I cannot support. Uh, and I want to use now the exact example of the Hawaiian community I'm working with, who are the homesteaders of Wainanalo. They're right here in the bottom southeastern corner of the Po'olau Poco District. Now, proposed rule changes have been submitted to you saying that whenever a project proceeds in an ahukua'a, that all cultural practices in the ahu, as well as abiding ahu, need to be assessed, researched, and thereafter consultation. Now, the Native Hawaiians of the Waimanalo homestead community own the energy resources upon which their homestead lies. And they have a right to develop those resources for hothouse agriculture, which is what they want to do. The proposed language that came in from Jocelyn Doan and others would mean that those homesteads couldn't move until they did a resource assessment for all of Kona District, Kona Ahu, which is Honolulu, all the way down to Aina Haina, all of Waimanalo, all the way out to Kane Ohe, Kailua, Kailua Bay, and into portions of Ko'olaumua. For the purpose of trying to see if they can have a hot house agriculture project in Waimanao. They have to identify every person fishing, worshiping at a hail, collecting flowers, planting taro, and then they have to go and have a consultation with them. Native peoples own these resources and they have a right to address them in an efficient way. These types of proposals are coming in not to facilitate the PLDC, but to delay its work. They do not protect Hawaiian resources or Hawaiian rights, and you need to see through it and see what's going on there. Two other proposals I make for your consideration. When I looked at Section 13.302.25, the, the, the submittals of the initial project proposals, I see that the language is tracking to the original draft of 2011, which was for one central project. Some projects like energy don't proceed in that way you have an initial exploration phase. And if it proves up, then you proceed to a development phase. When you're dealing with energy, uh, you have to break it in that way. It's not possible for someone dealing with energy like the homesteaders to come in and show you a plan because they don't know if they have it or not. And if they do have it, maybe it will be sufficient for hothouse agriculture, but maybe it will not. So you need to address that. Secondly, I'm recommending that we consider some changes to the section relating to conflict resolution. I think you might want to take a look at section 205 under the Land Use Commission. There we have the mediation uh, language, which I think could be useful. However, if you do look at that, I'm recommending a number four be included, and that is picking up the purpose of the PLDC, because the PLDC must show that any development that it undertakes and participates in brings an economic, social, and environmental benefit to our people and the people of the state of Hawaii. And so I think that that requirement must be added to the criteria that we now have in Section 205, but it's something to think about to expedite time and to save money. Thank you.